the honor, the guest of honor, uh, Honorable Captain Dr. Mike Okula, uh, government ministers here, and other government officials who are here, uh, the clergy, my colleague here, Professor Maswa, Professor Puda, Professor Puda is there. I don't I can't forget him. He works on me very well when he was at the graduate school when I was doing PhD. Prof, welcome. The NEMA board of direct, directors who are here. The NEMA team who are here. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am Professor James Okoto Kumu, the Chairperson, Member Board of Directors. So I'm standing in front of you, not only because I, I work with Dr. Ikure, but because I appreciate what he's done for mankind. I have not known him for long yet because we first met in uh, 2021 when we became members of the board. But through this short period of time, we have, we have become very close because he has also helped me medically and in some thoughts. This is not the first book he has written, this is the second one. So let me now address you. I address you in a respective capacity. I address all of you in your respective capacities and protocols observed. I may have missed some of you in mentioning the people that have already stated. And it is my honor and privilege to be here today standing in front of you to celebrate the launch of this book, Changing the World, written by Dr. Ikure. I was privileged to write the foreword of this book, and as a writer of the foreword, I read the manuscript of the book beforehand. I searched the meanings and reasons, and also analyzed the significance of the information and communication therein. This is the privilege of being a writer of a preamble because you get first an opportunity to look at the contents of the book. So I therefore had a unique opportunity to search into the depths of the author's words and explore the crux of the message inside. Hence, I would like to mention that Dr. Ikure gave me the opportunity to do this. And that is why I'm standing here, to try to tickle your minds so that we shall have a conversation after reading this book. For those who have already read, read it, we have a good conversation here. Uh, Dr. Kore, in writing this book, brought out his personal experience through writing. That clearly demonstrates the power of books. Such books provide literature that captivates but also enlightens and can cause transformation in human beings. This book is deliberately set out in three parts. The first part deals with mindset change. Part two deals with human skills. And part three 
is the productivity with the enlightening contents. So in each of the sections of the paths, you find contents that build up logically to lead you to the goal. And what is the goal? Is to be a productive person. So if you are productive and you influence others also to be productive, you have a contribution to society to make a productive society or a community which builds up a nation. We learn from this book that positive or growth mindset will allow us to focus our human skills to cause change. And this change is for a more productive society that fosters sustainable socioeconomic development. In the foreword of this book, which I wrote, I deliberately focused my words on Africa. This is deliberate because of our unique ecosystem. Also, as a reminder to you readers about our dire situation as regards mindset. However, the book could be discussed by us in the context of the whole world, a nation like Uganda, families, and even the individual. So whatever the case, it starts with the individual and we must cultivate a mindset that is positive. The individual must cultivate a mindset that is positive. What we could call the growth mindset. Embracing hard work, ambitions, vision, innovation, work ethics, growth and resilience. So, to proceed, to live a purposive or purposeful life, a person must first understand and accept that scarcity exists. So, you can only solve a situation when you know that certain problem exists. Then that person who has recognized or realized that there is a scarcity can then go ahead to choose from the various possible positive change pathways or transformation pathways the best for himself. That is determined by his own skills and that can cause then therefore meaningful change to himself and eventually the community. For a meaningful change to occur, growth mindset or positive mindset and appropriate skills are essential preconditions for productivity that cause change in economic and social status of a person. Such scenarios would aggregate to set a foundation for improved national production and development, which of course has got global impacts as well. So you start from the small, that is an individual, and it grows through communities to a nation and globally. Alternatively, you may also call it productivity mindset. That means being clear and focused on your goals and using all the resources at your disposal to achieve those goals in an organized manner. It means you have a clear vision, you know your goals well, and therefore know where you want to go, and can plan, therefore, 
how to go there. Ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about mindset, we should not forget the self, the self. That distinguishes you from others. And how you can work with that to achieve your goals or be productive. So what am I saying? I'm, I'm saying that an individual, for an individual, it is important to know yourself well. And I would like to now bring on board the notion of self-awareness. Self-awareness. Which is a key factor in working towards our goals and success. With self-awareness, we are conscious of ourselves and have a clear mind to align ourselves with our values and personal aspirations for the purpose or for a purpose-driven life. Positive thinking or optimistic attitudes is good because it brings hope and self-confidence that are essential for positive change. For positive change. That is to be productive and also it is not a solitary activity. This notion of productivity. It is a collective pursuit that involves collaborative endeavor. It requires suitable ecosystem, therefore, that supports and rewards productivity and the fundamentals. This is where and when the environment, the people around you, including leadership, become very important. Therefore, in this book, the ESG, or the Environment, Social and Governance Principles, have been used towards the end to explain some of these issues. When you consider this collectively, it will lead you to do sustainability. It is important use these principles for conservation. Now moving towards the end of my comments, I believe all of us here to pick from the pages of this book to enrich us our, in our knowledge and to cause meaningful change. The journey of Dr. Ikure that has influenced the contents of this book could be similar to yours. It could be similar to yours. And we evoke memories. These memories can be joyful when you remember where you scored success. Or it could be sorrowful when you remember where you missed some opportunities. We live in a world of trials and tribulations that calls for character, strength, resilience, and meaningful life. Each word and the crafted sentences in the main body of this book are the choice of the author, aim to ignite our imaginations and cause conversations among us. So the plan and formatting of the book is also demonstration is a demonstration of the author's insights and experience and also character. A book also brings character by the way. It is a remarkable book, I would like to say. I think we can clap for Dr. Kura because it's a remarkable, remarkable book. I go to the book now, it's a fairly long speech, Dr. Kura. Um, it is very long because I'm impressed. Uh, a book is a medium for recording information and providing opportunities for sharing information with readers. So as we read this book, let us remember the powers of the book to connect us, to motivate us, and to remind us of our shared experiences and human nature. 
The ideas put on paper may challenge us, but this is an opportunity for us to attend with open minds and celebrate with Dr. Ikora the launch of this book today. Changing the World is a book that has relied on the richness and diversity of human experience for excellent reading. I learned <coughs> that a good portion of this part of the funds that is going to come from the book will go to the Elizabeth Opola Foundation, which is to sponsor and privilege youth with education and also environmental conservation. This is an excellent and this is an excellent and it's really is an excellent move and it's also really in line with the purpose of causing change. To Dr. Ikure, I extend my heartfelt gratitude for entrusting me with the honor of writing the foreword of your book. I thank you so much, the Yadamanoi. To thank your dear wife, Susanna Siu, I hope she is here. I have to thank her for the time and space and comfort she gave you so that you are able to write books. <laughs> to all my colleagues who are here, Professor Maswa, Dr. Chan, and the others who may be seated here. Um, I want to tell you that I'm happy to be one of you who was chosen by Dr. Kore to write the preamble of this book. Thank you. Um, let me reiterate that the book will evoke individual memories, cause of examination, and influence actions. And I have no doubt that countless people will have the privilege of reading this book. Finally, to all of you who are gathered here, please join me in celebrating the launch of this extraordinary book, which has the power to cause mindset change, to let us re-examine our core values, and to change our lives. God bless you all.